as you get older, don't jump, don't squat, don't do pull-ups. Our bodies are meant to move, bend, and twist. As you get older, if you have a truck, you might have to jump out of that and land on the ground. So don't stop doing what you did when you were younger. Gail it back if you need to and get back to those activities. So going through a full body today, if you follow me, you know that almost every single workout, I'm doing something for lower and something for upper body. I only train four days per week, and I think that's really important to kind of incorporate everything. For me, being 48 years old, it actually helps with fatigue. Ladies, do not be afraid of the weights. The weights are your friend. Lifting is truly the fountain of youth. Like I said, I'm 48 years old. You wanna be lifting heavy. You don't wanna be doing two pound dumbbells forever because what's gonna happen is nothing. So make sure that you're adding weight, especially as you get older. It's gonna help with osteoporosis. It's gonna help you feel better. It's gonna help you get leaner, and it's gonna help you just feel younger overall. So we're just gonna start with good mornings. Warm up with the bar. You don't need to just start with super heavy weight. You always wanna make sure that everything's feeling really good, especially when you're doing hinging movements or squatting. When I do good mornings, I don't like the bar sitting very high on my back. I take that same low bar position that I do when I'm squatting. Reason being is with a good morning, you're bending over this way. If the bar is too high up, I almost feel like it's gonna roll on to the top of my neck. So keeping it into a low bar position helps me maintain the bar right where I want it on my back. Another technique point here, like with RDLs, you don't wanna be doing the bending of the knee. It's a hinge movement. So you wanna make sure your knees are bent slightly and that you're pushing your butt all the way back, keeping your back neutral, going down as low as your mobility will allow. If this starts to happen, you're going too low for your mobility. So stay tight, take in your air, push the butt back, pause it for a second, and then come right back to the starting position. Stance with these, you'll also notice I take the same stance that I take for my squats and for my conventional deadlift. If you are a wider stance squatter, you can take a wider stance. If you're pregnant, um, good rule of thumb is to just go a little wider to allow room for your midsection as your stomach grows. Also, just make sure you have doctor clearance for that. Typically, even when I was pregnant, I was able to train all the way through, just modifying things as I went and listening to my body as I went as well. Okay, so I'm moving on to bench now. As I mentioned earlier, I have a bench variation every single time that I train, so that's four days a week. When people hear that, they're like, oh my God, that's way too much. You have to keep in mind, if you're doing a movement multiple times in a week, you're not going heavy every single one of those times. So I'll have a heavier day, a lighter day, and it's also variations. So if you're worried about that's gonna to be too much volume, not gonna be able to recover, you will be able to recover because you aren't going heavy every single time you bench. And if you are, you're doing it wrong. Get on the program, jump on the app, and make sure that you're doing it the right way. So as I'm warming up, it's a three count pause bench, but on my warm ups, I kind of just touch and go, and then I'll, I'll do the top sets the right way. If you wanna pause, go ahead. Um, it's kind of just preference. I know a lot of times women are down on themselves, especially when it comes to bench press because they feel weak or they feel like they can't do it. Trust me, the more that you do it, the stronger you're gonna get. This is why frequency is very important. Even if your max is just the bar, if you're at a commercial gym, you can get into the machines. The machines will allow you to push a little bit more weight without the fear of dropping the bar on you. Another thing that we do is we get a bench block and we put it on the biggest side so she has the least range of motion and we're able to overload it a little bit that way. So don't be afraid, even if your bar is the max, to try variations because you'll still get stronger if you include those in your programming. Okay, top set now, 75 kilos. A lot of people ask, where are your eyes? I don't look at the ceiling. I'm watching the bar. I'm watching the bar as it comes down onto my chest. I feel like if you look at the ceiling, that would make me dizzy. But yes, watch the bar as, as it's touching your chest. It's, it's gonna help. And the hardest part about three count pause benching is counting to three when it's on your chest and then keeping in count. Did I do five? Did I do six? If you have a training partner, let them do it for you. If not, maybe record it and play back how many you did. Also, just to try to be consistent in your counts. So it's like one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three coming up on those. Breathing and stuff as you're doing that. It can be a little bit harder when you're doing the three count pause benches for every single rep. So just as you maybe do two, come up, retake your breath at the top and come back down. What I have is dumbbell jumps. Another thing that they tell you as you get older, don't jump. Granted, yeah, if you haven't jumped and done, done a box jump since you were 18 years old and you're 50, yeah, you might want to scale that so you don't hurt yourself. But 
there's no reason you can't jump. Our bodies are meant to move, bend, and twist. Don't stop doing things that you did when you were younger. If you need to return to those activities, just to scale those activities. For instance, I started sprinting again. I used to sprint in high school. Yeah, I'm not gonna go out there and try to run the fastest that I can run just because the Olympics was on and, and I used to sprint in high school. I'm 48 years old. I haven't done that since high school. So what am I doing instead? I'm doing like butt kicks, doing high knees, kind of getting my ankles and my knees acclimated back to that activity before I go into full sprint mode. So scale it back if you need to and get back to those activities. I wanna land like a ninja, which I'm definitely not landing like a ninja right now. First, that's a little touch and go, but as you're doing these, you don't wanna go into a full squat. It's just a slight squat so that you can try to get as high as you possibly can go. Watch me just jump to the ceiling. I'll be ready to dunk, dunk by the end of the week. <laughs> okay, next up, chin-ups. Most people love chin-ups better than pull-ups. When people are first learning, it is an easier thing to learn than a regular pull-up. But for whatever reason, I, I love to hate them. I don't know why, I just prefer doing pull-ups and maybe because I do pull-ups a lot more often, but that's why it's really important to sometimes have a program that's gonna make you do things that you don't necessarily wanna do. Uh, it's also really important for the bicep tendon to train both ways and not just one way. I know for me, um, doing pull-ups a ton tends to aggravate stuff, so flipping it around and, and doing chin-ups is one of the, the best ways to prevent that from happening. Something that I just do even when I do pull-ups is crossing my legs behind me and staying really tight. Some people have a really big problem with this. They're like, what if you slip off the bar and you need to you know, land? Well, just uncross, <laughs> uncross my legs. But the reason that I do that is it prevents the swinging. It actually helps me stay much tighter. This way that I'm really able to get into like this hollow body position and pull up. So it's just a preference if you're afraid that as you're gonna drop, if you need to drop down, you won't be able to uncross your legs in time, then just don't cross them, but try to maintain a very rigid lower body. That way you're not swinging. It's also why it's really important to jump because if you do fall and you need to land, it's gonna be much easier on your knees and your back. Okay, so if you're watching this going, yeah, I can't even do one pull up or one chin up. How do I do that then? If you're in a commercial gym, there's assisted machines. You can also use bands. You can set up a rack in the squat bar. Go to where your comfort level is off the floor and kind of pull yourself up and then use your legs when you need to and then go back down and then control it on the way down. The bottom position is the hardest for most people and that's where we want to work towards getting that way you can get up. So I'm not using my legs yet, I'm pulling. Now let's just say it gets hard, I can't go anymore. I use my feet, get my chin over the bar and then control it, don't use my legs to control the negative down. And that's one way that you can start progressing your pull-ups or your chin-ups and then eventually start raising the bar so that you're able to go a little bit longer without using the help of your legs. A couple of different ways you can do lateral raises. You'll see people do it with their arms completely straight out. I have a slight bend in mine. It just allows you to go a little bit heavier, but I also feel it a lot more in my delts when I have a slight bend. It's very slight. And you'll often hear that cue like, pour the water out, pour the jug out, this way that the elbow is above the wrist. So if that helps you, then do it that way. Also, if you are new to this exercise or new to lifting in general, you might need to start with the five pound dumbbells. There is zero shame in that. This is definitely a hard exercise. It's a hard exercise to progress in, especially if you wanna maintain good form and good technique. It's all about the vanity anyway, the vanity muscle. So we don't need to go heavy. We just need to look good doing it. Last thing I have is tricep pushdowns. I am fortunate enough to have this lat pull down machine. Thank you, Brian at Ultraflex. He gave me this old piece of equipment. But if you do not have access to this, you can always do push downs with your bands. There's also attachments you can buy so you can get a pulley machine that will attach to your squat rack so that you're able to do these accessory exercises. So check into that. One of the things that I like to do when I'm doing tricep push downs is really keeping my elbows by my side. That way I'm filling it in my triceps and not doing like what you see some people do. They come up like this and really use a lot of momentum. Keeping it here for me just allows to isolate it completely in the tricep. And then I kind of just spread the rope apart at the bottom. Just get that little extra flex, you know? And then once that gets too hard, then I just keep it straight down. Okay, last but not least, my favorite ab exercise, the pee in mouth crunches. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you guys as usual for watching. Make sure that you get strong with me. We have an amazing community and believe it or not, most of our community members do not compete, like 3% of them do, but most of them are also over 40. Jump on the app, get strong with us. You get two weeks free to try it out, juggernautai.app. And if you guys have any comments, post it below and don't forget to subscribe and like this video.